always love all the fresh produce in summer and in this video I'm going to share with you how I cook often without a recipe because I'm just looking at what I have and how I could combine ingredients for really simple easy summer cooking. I'm also going to share my favorite sourdough focaccia recipe with you. For my sourdough focaccia I am using my sourdough starter I'm using about half a cup here and it's a really nice ripe active one. Sauto starter always tends to be a little stringy. I'm adding that to my bowl. I just talked about stringiness. I need to scoop a little bit because if you're just using half a cup it's always worth getting everything out. To that, I'm adding four tablespoons of warm water to get the sourdough starter even more active and going. I'll give that a quick stir. If you're not using a Danish dough whisk with, which I often actually love doing, I'm just going to use a fork and metal always is okay. And I've already teared my kitchen scale because those ingredients here are so few and so little that it actually makes sense to weigh them out rather than measuring them. So we have some honey and making sure I get just the right amount of honey because there's some on my hand and that's probably the gram or two that I need. And even though I love eyeballing and I love just cooking without a recipe, sometimes the success of a recipe really depends on using exact measurements and for the sourdough focaccia I recommend you use a digital kitchen scale. They're very inexpensive, they're like $25 on Amazon. I'm adding olive oil, lots of it, because that really helps the flavor and the consistency of the sourdough focaccia. And then we need some salt. Again, tear back to zero. Sometimes I gotta wait a moment before it actually goes to zero. And then flour. And so here I'm starting with a cup and a quarter. You may have to adjust those measurements a little bit upwards or downwards, but you want a really shaggy dough, which I'm gonna show you just in a moment once I get all those ingredients, especially the honey mixed in, because it um is, is easier when you do that with the warm water. So I'm starting with a cup and a quarter of flour. You can use regular all-purpose flour. Sometimes I add a mixture of bread flour and all-purpose flour, but I find that this recipe is really versatile and you can just play with the ingredients. And um, if you're just getting started, I always like uncomplicated recipes but there's always room for experimentation. You can add some stretch and folds. You can do some cold retarding in the refrigerator. You can even do an autolyze. All the things that I'm not doing here because there's my shaggy dough. I just want to show you that it's really simple. It's really easy. I'll cover that with a beeswax wrap and let that sit in a warm spot. There's my dough. It has puffed up some. And this is a recipe that's just perfect for two to three people. And I like using a eight by eight square glass baking dish. I'm adding a lot of olive oil and then some of my hands. And I might do, I mean, it's not technically a stitch and fold. But I'm just massaging the dough here a little bit and trying to make it a little less sticky because it's a very wet dough. A very shaggy dough just to make it come together a little bit but it's also going to stick to the bowl so just giving it a little bit of love here and then it does want to come off the bowl so here you can see how sticky it is i'll put that in the glass baking dish and i'm just gonna spread it out a little bit not all the way to the edges maybe but just a little bit so it assumes the shape of the baking dish. You can easily double this recipe and then just use a square baking dish or anything else that you have. And again, covering it with my beeswax wrap and letting it sit. So in the meantime, 
I am making something with zucchini. And I knew I wanted zucchini and I just came up with this recipe on the spot. I heat some olive oil in my cast iron skillet and while that's heating up I'm cleaning the zucchini of all the ends and then I'll cut the zucchini in small dice. First I'll like to cut them lengthwise and then one more time or two more times depending on the size of the zucchini. And then just cut them a little small pieces. As you can see, I'm going to need to cook. I, just, I don't know. I'm just, I just am. I'm not really necessarily striving for it. So zucchini likes to stick together. And if you do it right, you can just transport the whole half cut up and everything into your cast iron skillet, which I'm doing right here. And I cut the last piece up while I'm starting to brown the first pieces. And the key here is to let them sit so that they can actually brown and caramelize and that really intensifies the fresh flavor of the zucchini and I love that. And also zucchini has a lot of water and by sauteing it like this in oil, you're getting rid of a lot of the water and concentrating the flavor and the taste of it. Giving it a quick stir. Turn up the heat a little bit. I know I want them to brown just a little bit more. This is one of those easy recipes that's always perfect for summer. I've decided to make a type of crustless quiche, if you will. So I'm grating up a lot of cheese. My favorite one is always Gruyere, and I love the Emmy Roth Gruyere. I'll be leaving a link in the description box of this video so you can find them because they're actually pretty widely available but the Gruyere is just always the perfect cheese for this type of dish and I don't mind doing things by hand. Yes I have some kitchen processors but I find that by the time I've attached the shredding attachments and put the cheese in there and then usually I end up with some pieces that I have to chop up by hand anyways and then by the time I clean everything, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm just as fast for a smaller piece like this with a hand box grater. Just being careful. It's a vegetarian dish, if you know what I mean. And as I said, I'm a neat cook, so I grated all the cheese right into my bowl. Taking all the cheese that's stuck on the inside into my bowl. Sometimes you'll be surprised what you get stuck in there. Here I have some homemade sour cream. That was just perfect. I'm checking out from my zucchini. They're starting to brown on one side, so I need to turn them around a little bit so that all the sides are getting browned or at least sauteed a little bit. for my sour cream. And this is about maybe a cup and a half or so of sour cream that I'm adding here. And for this, it's really, it depends on your preferences, your taste, the amount of people you're serving. For that, I'm adding my eggs. Those are grass fed pasteurized eggs and I always love how deep orange the egg yolk is versus a pale yellow which means that they're not getting high quality food and probably not a lot of bugs which is really what chickens eat. Everything happens here in one bowl as you can see. I'm going with that theme of me being a neat cook. We need another quick stir. The heat is really cranked up now and I can hear the sizzling and I can see the browning and even if it 
gets stuck a little bit on the bottom, that's okay because I can scrape it off and you wanna save those pieces because they really add so much to the flavor. So pushing it a little bit more over the center of the flame. And then I stir the eggs, sour cream and cheese all right together in this bowl. So we're gonna use really simple recipes. Actually, it isn't even a recipe. I just I just thought about what I had and what I wanted to do. And I'm adding just a little bit more sour cream here. Because I have it and yeah, it tastes good. I have another recipe. I have another video in which I'm showing how to make your own sour cream and I'll also be leaving the link below. And I'm adding some salt to this because the zucchini don't have such a big flavor and they can take quite a bit of salt and some fresh ground black pepper. That's always a must. And anytime I'm doing something with eggs and cheese, I love to grate some fresh nutmeg into it. I just absolutely love that. If you haven't tried that, I encourage you to find some nutmeg and fresh is always best. If you only get it ground, obviously that works as well. Bikini are looking good, but as you can see, they, they need quite a bit of cooking time here to really release all the water and to let that evaporate. Now I'm mixing in all my spices, so they evenly in there. Now the zucchini are just getting to where I want them, like nice and brown, a little crisp, a little caramelized. Mm -hmm. Great, that's exactly what I wanted. And then very simple, this is crustless. I have the zucchini on the bottom and I'm just pouring the egg cheese sour cream mixture over it. It's nice how it covers really the zucchini and because the cast iron skillet is still hot, it's already starting the cooking process of the egg cheese mixture. Let's spread that a little bit and try to submerge most of the zucchini. If they're sticking out, that's fine. It's not really, doesn't, doesn't matter. I'd already preheated my oven and I will put it in there at about 375 or 400. And back to the sourdough focaccia that has nicely risen now and I'm sprinkling, drizzling some more olive oil on top and spread it out a little bit more towards the edges to make it also one, one thickness. And then I'm using my spread fingers to create these dimples in the top of the dough. And you really want to do that because otherwise it's just going to puff up in the middle, like dome in the middle and you really wanna press it down. So don't be shy, just go ahead. And there's various ways that you can add herbs and vegetables to your sado focaccia here. I'm just using some fresh rosemary from the garden. I'm cutting up some tomato, cherry tomatoes in halves and adding them. There's some really beautiful, I wanna call it focaccia art out there. You can use other vegetables, but Sometimes I just like to keep it simple with rosemary and tomatoes. It always looks so pretty when it's fresh. I have some herbal salt from the European Alps. It's called Algoya Kräutersalz. <laughs> I'm not sure if they ship to this country, but nevertheless, I can leave a link below. And it's really beautiful because it has um, a nice salt, like a coarser sea salt, and it has a lot of really nice herbs from alpine meadows. And it's so beautiful because you'll have little bright blue petals and some yellow petals and you know green herbs. So I think that really adds to the look of the focaccia. And then I'm just putting it right on top of my zucchini quiche here because I don't have enough space otherwise in my oven. 
Now the quiche is done, I'll remove the focaccia, take the quiche out. Looks nice and golden brown on top. And then return the focaccia back to the oven because it wasn't quite done and needs another 10 minutes. And then we have some salad going. and I always like to add some Dijon mustard to my dressing. Very simple, just olive oil, balsamic vinegar, and some herbs, salt and pepper. Mix that up and pour that over my lettuce here. Adding mustard to the dressing always helps emulsify it and makes it really creamy. And I like the taste. Again, more of my mountain meadow herbal salt. A friend gave that to me recently and it's so pretty. It's so yummy and so pretty. Oops, looking for the right salad mixers. over the salad. I always like to have some salad with our dinners because it's just like some fresh greens, especially in the summer, that's so refreshing. Even though you can see I am wearing a fleece top, it's been unseasonally cool here in California. I don't know about where you are, but it's been cool and I don't actually mind baking and, um, you know, baking various things at higher heat because <laughs> If it's cool like this, I don't mind getting the kitchen warm. And here's my quiche. It's very hot and steamy, and unfortunately the first piece tends to be the most difficult to get out, so I'm trying to put it back together. Kind of works. So that's that. And let's check up on the focaccia. Mmm. Looks great, so I'll let that sit in the baking dish for about 10 minutes before I remove it. Another evening, I decided to make sourdough pasta and I already started the dough for it, the pasta dough. And again, I can link the video for you. It's a really simple recipe and I don't mind that my dough isn't all uniform. It's, it's a little bit dry and shaggy and not really come together but since i'll be moving it through the pasta machine a few times i don't mind so much so i'm just going to try to incorporate a little bit of the drier pieces and the flour that hasn't really come together in there find a knife here and i'll cut that into four eh, equal pieces and move them through my pasta maker nice because I can attach it to my kitchen counter. However, if you're giving a close look, you'll see that I have the cabinet door underneath open because otherwise I wouldn't have enough room for the clamp to attach the pasta maker to the counter. So while I'm doing this, the cabinet underneath is always open. It's kind of funny, but it works. So you can see that the pasta dough is not really staying together, which is totally fine because the more often you do it, the better it will stick together. And you can use pasta flour for it if you have access to it, or just regular flour. You can also use spelt flour or einkorn flour. Um, you can add some whole grain flour to it. Um, pasta is really very forgiving. This one has eggs in it, so the eggs make sure that it all sticks together. So I'm just folding it back over. and adding some dry pieces to it, trying to make it all pretty uniform. And then I'll move it through it again. You can see that it's already sticking so much better. And it's pretty fun. If you have kids, they often love turning that crank and helping out with pasta. So here I go again, and much better already this time. This is on the widest setting. This is what I always start and then I fold it back over. If it's really sticky, I might add some flour, but this is not really it. This was kind of dry to begin with, so I didn't need to do that. And 
and this is probably my last go. So I'll put that over here and letting the dough rest. I like to flour my counter because otherwise it might stick to the counter and then um, it destroys my pasta. And then I'll just continue with the remaining dough. Here I have my flat sheets and now I have the fettuccine or linguine, I'm not really sure, attachment on my pasta maker and I'm moving it halfway through. Oh, a bit awkward here with my hands. <coughs> I gotta get it out. So, But I want to keep it together because as you can see in the back I have a wooden dish rack that I am converting into a pasta dryer so I can hang the pasta from it and it won't stick together. So I'll finish that. And then for a sauce, I'm just going to go for a very simple tomato sauce. We've got so many good tomatoes already here in June and I'll dice up an onion. Again, this was one of those evenings when I look in the refrigerator and like there was a half onion in there that needed to be used up and I had some tomatoes. And um, so I decided to make pasta with a really simple tomato sauce. And I told you I'm a neat cook, so I'm trying to keep everything together, which with onions is not always easy. And I can always recommend using a very sharp knife. If you don't have a sharp knife, it makes a lot of sense to try to sharpen it right before you cut an onion. Because if you don't use a sharp knife, you'll be pushing the onion around and not actually cutting it and then it makes it a little bit harder. So that's why I always like to make sure I use a sharp knife. And this is a carbon knife. This is one that doesn't go in the refrigerator, um, refrigerator in the dishwasher uh, because it will rust. And I don't mind that at all because I don't need to put it in the dishwasher. I just make sure I keep it dry. I don't mind, I actually prefer the patina and it's super sharp and I can just um, move it over my honing steel a few times and um, I just love it. And they're very inexpensive and very durable and um, yeah, they're just really nice. So adding a good helping of olive oil to my hot skillet. And then I can just use my cutting board to push all the diced onions into the hot skillet. just saute the onions until they're soft and translucent. That will also make them a little bit sweeter, even if you don't use sweet onions, which I actually don't like to use. I find that they have enough sweetness on their own. So I'm going to cut up my tomatoes. I have a combination of regular, I think they're early girls, and some cherry tomatoes. that in dice. You know you're using a sharp knife if you can cut your tomato really easily, especially on the skin side. And I'm sure you've tried cutting through tomato and then it was just pushing around and not really actually cutting through it. Cutting up the end tomatoes here. I always love the fresh, slightly acidic taste of the tomatoes in the early summer. It's always so, yeah, so quintessential summer. And if you have good quality ingredients, you really don't need a lot of fancy additions to your recipe. You can just let the good ingredients, high quality ingredients shine and the sourdough pasta is already so flavorful and actually really simple to make. It's really fun and every time I do I am thinking that there is no comparison to store-bought pasta and it's just so worth it. Yes, it does take a little bit more time but um, 
it's not very difficult and it's so worth the extra effort. So we have a lot of cherry tomatoes here. I got some fresh herbs from the garden. I got some basil, some thyme, and some oregano. And I'm gonna keep the basil and the other herbs separate because I don't want to add the basil quite yet. I wanna do that once the pasta is all cooked and ready to go with the sauce. But I am already chopping it up and basil always mm, smells so good. Keep the chopped basil in a separate small dish. And then I have the oregano. Just simply strip that off the harder stem. And I'll cut those little leaves. They're actually pretty big because they're doing really well in our garden. And so I like to cut them a little bit smaller. I got some thyme over here. That's a little bit harder to make it come off the stems, those small leaves. They're really tiny. And I always find that that's, those are really good herbs for any pasta sauce, especially tomato sauce. For the tomato sauce, I'm adding a little bit of frozen tomato paste. And often what happens is we get those bigger cans at Costco and I often just need a tablespoon or two and then I have all this remaining tomato sauce and I just simply put it on parchment paper and freeze them in like little chunks. And then whenever I need just about a tablespoon or so, I can put the tomato paste right into the sauce here. I'm gonna let that um, thaw and melt down a little bit and giving my sauce a try. Mm. Like I said, quality ingredients always shine on their own. However, it does need a little bit of salt. Salt always brings out the good flavor here. I'm stirring up the frozen, just thawing tomato paste. That will also really help the tomato flavor. And this is such a cute hack. So easy, just keep the tomato paste in a small Ziploc bag in the freezer and you're not wasting anything. It's ready to go. You just take it out of the freezer anytime you want it. So waiting for it to all break down. Helping it along the way here. I guess I'm a little bit impatient. <laughs> I, I want to get on with the tomato sauce. Oh, there we go. And I find that that doesn't hurt the cast iron skillet. You don't let the tomato sauce sit in it forever. And if your cast iron is well seasoned, which mine is because I use it all the time and I oil it after every use, I don't have any problems here with my cast iron skillet and the acidity of the tomato sauce. All right, it looks like the pasta water is boiling. And one of the good things about homemade pasta is that when it's fresh, it cooks really quick. I'm just adding some salt here to the cooking water. Get my fettuccine, and I love the fact how long they are. Of course, you can let them dry out and then break them into pieces, but I actually like them this long. I like to curl them around my fork when I eat them. And yeah, I mean, how often do you get really long pasta when you buy it in the store? 
just move this around a little bit so it doesn't stick. You can also add a little bit of olive oil to your pasta water, but um, this will be done so fast, so quick. I just wanna make sure it doesn't stick to each other. I'm taking a little bit of the pasta water and add that to my tomato sauce. You may have heard about this little hack that it binds your sauce and makes the sauce stick to your pasta once you serve it a little bit better because the pasta water has some of the flour and the starch in it. So I like to do that. And then I'm cooking it down just a little bit. I'm adding my oregano and chopped thyme to my tomato sauce because I don't want to really want to cook the herbs for too long. I just want them to be heated up and um, to release their flavors into the sauce. And this is ready. Doesn't need much. I'm gonna drain my pasta. It literally takes like three minutes to cook. And often I let some warm water run over it, not cold water because I don't want them to cool down entirely, but just to not boil anymore. And then I always like a good helping of olive oil. It's very healthy and we love the flavor of the olive oil. Mixing it in with the pasta, making sure the pasta is completely coated. And yeah, as I said, I love olive oil on pasta. And trying it, mm, it's al dente, it's perfect, perfectly cooked. So all we need to do is dish it up and, a little bit of more salt also brings out all the flavors. And yeah, and that's our dinner for tonight. Super simple, super fresh, and except for making the pasta, actually pretty quick. I hope you enjoyed this video. I am always doing my best to answer all your comments for sure. I'm reading them all, even if I don't necessarily get to answering them all. However, I would love to hear from you if you have any questions or comments or any other ideas for me to do videos about, because ultimately I'm here for you and I want to make those videos that, um, serve you sounds a little bit like I'm a service, but that you really enjoy the most. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.